Did you know that one in five people were slaves during the Roman Empire? Hello and welcome to World History Encyclopedia. My name is Kelly and today's video is all about the widespread institution of slavery in ancient Rome. World History Encyclopedia is a non-profit organization and you can find us on Patreon, a brilliant site where you can support our work and receive exclusive benefits in return. Your support helps us create videos twice a week. So make sure to check it out via the pop-up in the top corner of the screen or via the Patreon link down below. Slavery was a widespread institution in ancient Rome with one in five people serving as slaves during the time of the empire. But the institution of slavery went back to the Kingdom of Rome that dated between 753 and 509 BCE, and it developed during the time of the Republic between 509 and 27 BCE, before becoming the most prevalent form of free labor during the Roman Empire from 27 BCE to 476 CE. Slaves were originally prisoners of war, but in time could be those sold by their families to relieve a debt, those kidnapped by slavers, convicted criminals, or those born into slavery. Slaves had no rights and no recourse to the law, as they were viewed as the property of their masters, just as a chair, a couch, or a cup would be. Did you know that only a small fraction of viewers are subscribers? Be sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of our new videos and help us create more great history content. The Kingdom of Rome extended its territories through military campaigns against other cities on the Italian peninsula, and those taken captive as prisoners of war were then enslaved. This practice expanded during the Punic Wars from 264 to 146 BCE, with Rome enslaving around 75,000 war prisoners after the First Punic War alone. Although the Cilician pirates preyed on Roman merchant ships, they also supplied Rome with slaves from all around the Mediterranean. Slave markets sprang up all around the region, from Sidae in modern-day Turkey to Delos, Greece, and onwards. Slaves would be brought to market with signs around their necks, advertising their strengths and skills, and would be auctioned off to the highest bidder or sold for a set price. Many of these slaves came either as kidnapping victims by the pirates or as prisoners of war from military campaigns, such as those of Pompey the Great in Anatolia or Julius Caesar in Gaul. A significant influx of slaves came from the fall of the Seleucid Empire in 63 BCE. By the time the Republic ended in 27 BCE, the institution of slavery in Roman territories was so firmly established, it was regarded as the natural state of existence. Some people had to be enslaved so that others could live life as they pleased. Slaves were non-persons in Rome and had no legal rights as they were regarded as their owner's property. They could not legally marry, start families, or own anything, and even their names were often given to them by their owners. Slaves were a kind of status symbol for the upper-class Romans, as they signified your wealth. Buying and maintaining a slave was costly, although it is hard to say exactly how much a Roman sesterce brass coin is worth in modern currency. A Roman soldier during the reign of Domitian, 81 to 96 CE, was paid 1,200 sesterces a year, and in that same time, a slave cost between 2,000 and 2,500 sesterces, so well over a year's wage. This is not to say that was the average cost of a slave in every era. Slave prices changed according to supply and demand, and a slave could be had for a much lower price when the market was flooded, such as after a successful military campaign. Prices for slaves also varied according to their skill set. The highest price paid for a slave in Roman history was 700,000 sesterces for the highly literate intellectual Quintus Lutatius Daphnus in circa 130 BCE. Highly educated slaves went for high prices as they were used as private tutors for the sons of the upper class. Several famous Roman writers came to Rome as slaves, including the first playwright of the city, Lucius Livius Andronicus, the playwright Terence, and the Stoic philosopher Epictetus. 
Highly skilled slaves usually cost more than unskilled workers, but again, cost varied according to supply and demand. Agricultural unskilled slaves might be sold cheaply at one time, but for a much higher price at another. Agricultural slaves were treated worse than house slaves, as they were usually chained together and kept in barracks or sheds like animals, often working from dawn until dusk. Slaves could serve as administrative assistants, mine workers, dock hands, in manufacturing, as military porters, on building projects, as wet nurses and midwives, attendants to the lord and lady of a household and their children, as waiters, and as performers in certain religious rites. A slave remained the property of his or her owner for life, unless they were freed during the owner's lifetime or at the owner's death, or managed to purchase their own freedom which was rare as most slaves were not allowed to make or hold money. A freed slave usually took the first two names of their former master and could become citizens, even own slaves themselves. And the children of freed female slaves had no limits placed on their civil rights, though they still had to deal with the stigma of having a mother who had once been a slave. It's no surprise that slaves didn't always take too well to this life, and their rebellions are known as the Servile Wars. The first Servile War between 135 and 132 BCE was led by the Greek slave Eunice. The second Servile War from 104 to 100 BCE by Athenion and Tryphon. And the most famous, the third Servile War between 73 and 71 BCE by the Thracian gladiator Spartacus. Although Spartacus is often depicted as a champion of freedom, trying to overthrow the institution of slavery, he actually only wanted to free himself initially, and then the group who became his followers. Starting at a gladiator school in Capua, the rebellion gained momentum quickly until he found himself leading an army estimated at around 120,000 and defeating two Roman armies in 73 BCE, before trying to fight his way to Gaul and freedom. The rebellion only failed when he was betrayed by the pirates who had agreed to transport him and his people to Sicily, and was then defeated by the consul Marcus Licinius Crassus in 71 BCE. Spartacus fell in battle and 6,000 of his followers were crucified as a warning against any future attempts at an armed uprising. Slaves rebelled in small ways, such as working slowly, stealing from their masters, or trying to escape, but no armed insurrection was ever successful. Slaves frequently were fitted with metal collars, sometimes inscribed with their master's name, which gave rise to the same practice with dog collars. Fugitive slaves, if caught, were severely beaten, branded, or even killed. The best a slave in ancient Rome could hope for was the manumissio, sending out from the hand, the ritual by which a master freed a slave. This was usually a public event during which the master touched the slave on the head with a staff and gave him a felt cap to symbolize freedom. A slave could be freed at the death of the master by providing some important service, such as saving the family from a fire or thieves, out of respect for the slave's education, skills or loyalty, or for any other reason a master might see fit. Most people brought to Rome as slaves, however, never won their freedom and lived out their lives as the property of others. Why do you think there weren't more slave uprisings in Rome? Let us know what you think in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on our new videos published every single week. This video was brought to you by World History Encyclopedia. For more great articles and interactive content, head to our website via the link below. If you like my sweater, you can find this design and a bunch more in our shop at worldhistory.store, or you can find a link for it down below. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you soon with another video.